class is in memory of Jared Orchen. Chernobyl is the name of a city that everybody knows. In 1986, I think, it was the big um, nuclear reactor tragedy. But in the Hasidic world, Chernobyl is a name is a name of as a household name for 200 years. When the when the when the tragedy in Chernobyl took place, we already knew long, long about Chernobyl. One of the greatest Hasidic rabbis, masters of the Hasid, early Hasidic movement, a friend of the first Chabad Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, was a Nochum of Chernobyl. Very famous. There is amaz an amazing story about them. One evening, the Nochum of Chernobyl was known to be very poor, very, very poor. Once it was, it was a Thursday evening, and there was no money in the house. And the Gabai, his assistant, I might tell the story, but uh, it's very, it goes very well with the Parsha. And his Gabai came in, his Gabai was very worried that there was no money to buy food for Shabbat. And uh, then arrived one of the big Hasidim, the richest Hasidim, and he told them, you know, the Rebbe doesn't have any money. He told them, don't worry, I bought 300 rubles. Fine. And I'll give it to the Rebbe, 300 rubles. And he's the first Hasid to be accepted that night, right? He's the guy who bought the money. He let him in first. And people came in, and now, meanwhile, he's sitting and making a list of all the people that will pay off the food, the, the grocery store, and the butcher, and the this, and the this, and buy food, be able to breed. In the, mid, in, in the middle of the evening that he receives people, they took a break from Minche Mariv. Then after Mariv, they called back, he called back the last hostel that was in his room, said, call him back, I need to talk to him. Then he continued to receive people. The night was over, finally. The Gabbai walks into the Rebbe and he tells him he need money for Shabbat. He opens the door, he says, take what's there. Collected some money, but he didn't see the big money. He was embarrassed to say anything, but he was standing like this. It is a face, you know, a tissue face it's called. <laughs> Rabbi looks at him, the Nochem of Chernobyl looks at him and tells him, you're probably wondering where are the 300 rubles. Told him, you let him in first, right? And he smiles. Says, later, he said, when I received the money, I was very happy to God, thanking God for the money, and I was wondering why I deserve such a merit, so much money. Then later walked in at Chosid, and he told me that he lost his job, and he owes money for for the Melamed, for the teacher, for his kids. And on top of that, he engaged, his, his daughter guy is engaged and she has to get married. And I asked him, how much you need for all of the above? He tells me 300 rubles. I said, oh, I thought to myself, now I know what to do with it. Why Hashem sent it to me? I give him the money and solve all these problems. But then, I had a second thought. Why should I give 300 rubles to one guy? I'll give him 50 rubles and I'll support another five families with this. And he will go other places and, uh, and raise some money. And I didn't know what to do. What is the right thing to do? To give one person, to give him the 300 rubles? Or to give six families, everyone 50 rubles? And he says, because I was confused, I decided to take a break for service and to also think for myself to pray to God, he should give me the clarity to know what to do. To give all money to him. And he prayed to God. And then he started, said, I, I got a clarity. I started to think to myself, when was the time? What happened? He started to go back and think, when came to him the thoughts? 
says, when he received the money, he didn't think about giving it to charity. He thought about, oh, he's so lucky. The money is for him. Before I'll give you the answer, I'll give you another example that you'll understand better what I'm talking about. You wake up Saturday morning, Shabbat morning. Your wife tells you, let's go to show. You tell her, you know what? I'll go visit my mother in the nursing home. Two mitzvahs. Going to show. Visiting your mother in the nursing home. Honoring your mother, big mitzvah. What's the right thing to do? Now, both of them cannot be right. One of them is right at this moment. Even there are two good things. At this moment, there is a question you have to ask is what Hashem wants for me now. You see, the decisions between good and bad, are, the choices are much easier. It's good to do A, it's bad to do B. Clear. I, sometimes I don't. It's not easy to make the choice, but you know what the right thing is. Everybody knows right from wrong. Within the world of right, what is right is much harder. Then I, your wife says, let's go to synagogue. You say, I'm going to visit my mother. The question is, what comes from this side? What comes from the other side? What comes from the good inclination? What comes from the evil inclination? Because at this moment, when you ask yourself, what God wants from me now? To go to my mother? To visit my mother? Or to go to the temple? How do I know what's the right thing to do? You know what the answer is? I'll tell you what the Nochum of Chernobyl said. He says when he received the money, he didn't think about giving it to charity. But when he, this guy came in, the first thought came to him, let's give him the money. Then came another thought who said to him, why do you give it to one person, give it to six people? Sounds good, go mitzvah too. But he said, if this would come, if the idea of giving it to six people would be from the good inclination, it would come to it to begin with, when he received the money. When he received the money, he would have the thought, oh, I, I, I have... I have so much money, I'll take 50 rubles for myself, and the other money I'll give to another five families. Says, when I received the money, I didn't think about giving it to anybody. Only when I had that thought of giving all the money to one person, then came the second thought and said, oh, why don't we give it to one person? Okay, I'll give it to six families. Meanwhile, I'll give it to six families. Meanwhile, the guy will come in and will say, we need money. Before long, the whole meet will be, be, be closed. That's how he found, he realized that what comes from the good inclination is the first thought. If, on the, first, if, the, if the idea of giving it to six people would come from the good inclination, it wouldn't come as an afterthought. It would come, to begin, it would come as a first thought. In our example about going to shul would be if the night before the husband would tell his wife, you know, tomorrow morning I'm going to visit my mother. That would be a mitzvah that he's supposed to do. But he didn't think so. He didn't plan to go to his mother, to visit his mother the night before. Only in the morning when his wife woke up and told him, let's go to shul. This guy is trying to escape shul by all costs. <laughs> Suddenly he remembers his mother. Oh, I have to visit my mother. Really? Where were you last night? Two days ago. For two months you didn't see your mother. Suddenly you remember your mother? What I mean with this, the decisions within the world of good are really the most difficult decisions. Should I teach Torah to somebody, to should I teach a little child out of bed, or should I learn something that I enjoy? Should I, even within, let's say, you, you, have, you can go to your regular synagogue, or, you, or somebody asks you to come for a minion. You see, the, in the world of goods, there is so many choices, and they are so much more complicated. And the, the job is to be honest with yourself. The whole book of Genesis is about that. In the beginning, Abraham has to make a choice between two kids, Ishmael and Isaac. And when Sarah comes to tell him, tells him, sent away Ishmael from home, he doesn't want to. 
God told them do it. But this choice is pretty easy. Not easy to send them away, but to decide who is the child that will continue the Jewish tradition was very clear. God told them it Isaac will be the son that will continue the Jewish tradition. Ishmael was not born from Sarah. He was born from a different mother. That's not the continuation of Abraham. Isaac had two sons. Here was the choice a little more complicated because both of them were born to Rebecca. But it wasn't such a complicated choice after all. Esau was not a good guy. Esau, because he got angry with his brother, he was ready to kill him. You know, a good, a nice guy. You might be angry with your brother. He stole your blessings. Yeah, fine. That doesn't mean you're going to kill him. Esau married women, uh, Canaanite women, Hittite women, not something that his father was wishing for. And only later when he saw that his father wants uh, Jacob to marry from the family, he also decided to marry from the family. <coughs> Basically, Esau was not a nice, the nicest guy. It's true that he honored his father, but the choice was not so complicated when it came to the question, who should continue the Jewish legacy, the, the legacy of Abraham? Then comes our Pasha. And here is the real complicated choice. Who should be the next leader? Joseph? Oh who is normally should be Reuven, is the firstborn son. <coughs> Joseph is the firstborn son of Rachel. Reuven is the firstborn son of Leah. Reuven is also the firstborn son of Jacob. He was born first. But from Jacob's point of view, he's bashert. He's, he meant to marry Rachel, right? He went to marry Rachel. That was the goal. From Rachel, the firstborn son is Joseph. It's true, he was, he was tricked into, he got married, he married Leah, and Leah had children. But, but both of them are good. And later, as we, the story unfolds, basically is the fight not so much, the, the, the question is not between Reuben and Joseph, and the question is between Joseph and Judah. Judah and Joseph. Jacob knew that this next leader of the Jewish people will be Joseph. That's why he gave him the colorful coat. It wasn't just he loved them because he wanted to buy him a coat. He went to, to the store and bought him an expensive coat on Black Friday. <laughs> he, went, he wanted the coat was a mantle of leadership. And he gave him the coat. And it ended up to be true that he was the leader. Only later, 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 the, the house of king, kingdom came out from the, from the tribe of Judah. King David and the kings of the Israel, but mm -hmm. Israel, but even then later, and the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel, the war. Basically, the kings of Israel from the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim is the son of Joseph. Joseph and Judah. The struggle continued forever. When Moshiach will come, will come, will be united together. Will come, will come. Moshiach will be from Judah, but will be united together. According to some, will be a combination from Judah and Joseph. From this will come out Moshiach. That Jacob was right. Joseph was the leader at that time. But it was a very hard choice to make. But maybe the Talmud still makes a point that a person, a father, should never favor one child over the others because, because, jo look, because, of, two, the, because of the cut that J Jacob gave Joseph, the Jewish people end up in Egypt. That's how the Talmud puts it. That what was Jacob should do? Now it's my opinion. Maybe he should wait and let God play it out. Because if Joseph meant to be the king, he will be the king. Instead of helping God, maybe. I don't know if this is the right answer. But this choice is the hard choice to be made. And, and that's why it's, it was... It, turned into such a saga, the whole fight it in family, because both of them were good. It wasn't a question of good and bad. The world of good is the hard choices to make. And every time when we, in the world of mitzvahs, to make the right choice, you have to be in tune with your own self. You have to be honest with yourself. 
to fault, like to, a, to the level of real honesty, to ask yourself, for where is this coming? Really, I'm doing it for the sake of God? Or maybe, maybe there is something for me there too. That whenever, if it's not other choice, then it's easy. You do it. But if there is two, two, two mitzvahs present in front of you, you have to ask yourself, which one comes from where? From which side is it coming? And, and that's what takes, that's what Hasidus is, is, is teaching us, is to be honest with yourself and not fool yourself even when it comes to mitzvahs. Between good and bad, nobody fools himself. You know, it's bad. You fool yourself, that's not so bad, and that's I can have excuses, but deep down you know. You know the truth. But in the world of good, not to be a fool, for this we need to learn Hasidus.